and welcome. This is Artists on Art. I am your host, Nada Milkovich. For this week's Artists on Art, today is August 17th, 2016. I have the wonderful pleasure to be able to speak to someone who has um, added to our community for years in the most positive ways. I'm speaking today with Maya Delano. Maya um, is a community builder. She, when we first met, you were working with the Santa Cruz Design, Design and Innovation Center. Yeah, Design and Innovation Center. Mm-hmm. And then she went on to uh, work at Next Space as a community builder. Um, and But uh, the entire time that I've known Maya, she has also been creating art. And she not only creates art, but you're an educator. And you're starting a startup, your first, mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah. And the startup is Maya... It, just Maya Delano. That's And then right. I'm offering workshops and making art. It's that straightforward. Right. But it's even more <laughs> straightforward. You're talking about the creative process of art making, yeah. and which is a little different. It is a little different because you're focusing on the process of making and being in, in process versus focusing on products. So... Um, I mean, there's. I have, a, I have a long story to tell why I got to where I am, but um, finally, I feel like it's uh, really my duty to share what I, my knowledge and what I've learned um, with the rest of the community, whether it's in Santa Cruz or beyond. Um, and so, I finally made the leap from um, working as a nine to fiver to doing this full time. So it's been a fabulous and interesting little journey. And Maya Delano, you also have had your first workshop. Oh, in yes. July, which yeah. was very successful, and I believe it sold out. Right? Yeah, in four hours it sold out. So <laughs> oh I gosh. was, I just, I put Your it out first there. First workshop, congratulations! I, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I mean, of course, I did the the verbal hustle and um, did all <laughs> hey. those things and u- utilized the community. But most importantly, is the the quality of work and how I shared it with everybody. Um, I think people really want to participate in these types of workshops, and we'll go into a little bit more detail, of course, on what those are all about. Right, and you're offering these workshops monthly, and you have one that's coming up August 30th. Yes, that's a Tuesday night. It's from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, I'm choosing those evening weekdays because a lot of folks who are professionals like myself have been um, need that creative outlet, and 6 to 9 after work, even though it's like, ah, i got to do this after work, it's so rewarding. So I offer three-hour workshops. I also do weekend workshops. Um, kind of sky's the limit on that one. All right. Maya Delano. And so you have a background in uh, arts. You got a Bachelor's of Arts at the University U- of uh, Oregon. Oh, go Ducks. E- Eugene. <laughs> go Ducks. Yeah, I've yeah. been watching. There's a sprinter that's uh, a hurdler, actually, from mm-hmm. – um, that's I, Anyways, yeah, we're, we're known for our track and field <laughs> before that football team started doing really well. Right, right, right. So this this uh, Olympian is both uh, on the football team of the Ducks. And oh, of course. Yes. Anywho, my, we're here to talk about Maya. Wait, let's Delano. just talk about sports. I no, love sports. No, no, no. We're talking yeah. about creative process. There's other um, places people can go yeah. for sports. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're talking about art, and this is Artists on Art. I'm your host, Nada Milkovich, and um, it's a great pleasure to be able to be speaking today with Maya Delano and to introduce her to all of you that are listening. Maya is an an amazing community builder, artist, and um, creator. And so when she decided to make this leap into the unknown, um, I'm very, very in awe of your courage and supportive and want to let people know about these workshops. But before Mm we get into some nitty-gritty, Maya... You alluded at the beginning of this show <laughs> about a story. How did you get here? Well, I am. Oh, I've been thinking about that because it took, as you said, it took a lot of courage for me to go from a very awesome nine to five job um, and deciding really to become an entrepreneur and run my own business. Um, and not only that, 
but in the arts um, and as an art, a full time artist. So huge decision there. Um, but it really led up from when um, my mom was a therapist and my dad was an artist potter and he also was a construction guy. And so I grew up with a lot of art. But um, I like to tell people just because I grew up with people with a creative background does not necessarily mean it's going to give you the courage to decide as an adult to go into this full time. Um, but it did feed me because um, my mom eventually introduced me to a woman named Colleen Kiber, who was my mentor. And um, she is based in Santa Cruz. And um, she's, you know, taught at UCSC. She has a thriving practice um, at, in, and she's in her 80s. And we're all very, very lucky. It's, uh, she's a, a, a creative treasure here, not just in Santa Cruz, but um, in the United States and the world. And um, I was able to start working with her when I was 16. Um, my mom um, introduced me to her and I said, I got to do this. So after, we'll just bring up sports, after playing sports um, in high school, I'd go over and work with her or work with her on the weekends. And I kept doing that um, in even through college. I'd come home and work with her actually at UCSC here, um, teaching her creative workshops and being her assistant. Um, it's actually one of the reasons, even though I've traveled and been all over, it's one of the reasons I came back to Santa Cruz in 08. Um, and she's, oh, yeah. yeah. We met really quickly after that yeah, no, at, at Next Space. Yeah, actually. exactly. So, and Colleen's um, daughter is actually the one who introduced me to Jeremy Neuner. Um, one of the founders. One of the founders of Next Space. Space. And then and he was on the board of the Santa Cruz Design and Innovation Center. So, I mean, a lot of this is, um, even though I haven't been, so at that time, even though I was, I was still connected with Colleen, um, we're talking 08 here, I really started focusing on community building and promoting designers and the tech scene here, which is really what I've dedicated my time to since, oh, just until about <laughs> Last a week. month no. ago, yeah, pretty much, so up until uh, July, July when I... Uh, I left Next Space. Made the leap. I made the leap. Um, for the last over three years, I've been working. And by the way, shout out to all my Next Spacers, <laughs> um, including Nada here. Um, the the three plus years that I worked there, I was you know I was it was nine to five. I had my health insurance. All was great. Um, but I was constantly surrounded by people who were entrepreneurs <laughs> and doing their own thing. And honestly, I'd see people go off to lunch or go do be out and about. And I was so inspired, one, by that, but two, also just the passion that everyone had for their own individual um, business or making their personal mark in the world. And honestly, as the people of Next space for me, mostly entrepreneurs and um, small business owners. I just I got the bug, and I just decided I have to do what my passion is. And this whole time, art has been on the back burner. I've been making art. I've still taught a few workshops, but literally um, in 2012 is really when I stopped making art. <laughs> I mean, I do it here and there, but as an active practice. And, um, you know, I really focused on community building. And that really was my passion at the time. Yeah. And it still is, by the way. Of course. Uh, because the, that community that I've helped build is what's inspired me to be able to do my, do my thing. And I, you know, it's very difficult to say, I'm going to claim that you are an artist. I mean, we have a lot of... Um, well, here in Santa Cruz, it's very different. It's very freeing. But even in Santa Cruz, it's hard to say, I'm an artist. I'm a full-time so artist. What do you do? I'm an artist. I'm an artist. Um, what is the look you get? Yeah, uh -huh. and it is. It's like, oh, okay. What do you do? Do you do trust pots? Fund, I'm like, baby. yeah. I'm like, I, I, I've already wished my next lifetime. I want to be a trust fund baby. It sounds <laughs> awesome. No, I am. Um, uh, let's see. Where were we? Where were we? Well, you were talking about making the leap um, and going into uh, your own business, yeah. doing a startup, ah. and the community that not only have you built, but you've now um, cultivated into yeah. a clientele. And I, I'd like to talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about um, making that leap yeah. and the support that you got with that. I know that which was huge, right? And so, tell us, walk us through that process for us, so that maybe somebody who's listening is like, yeah. "Wow, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done with this <laughs> nine to five. I, I want to do something." I know. Well, and not only myself, but I now that it's like 
I kept wondering, how the heck do all of these other people, how have they made this decision and how did they do this? Because it takes a lot of courage, um, not only to decide to run your own business, but just to leave the safety net. Um, and honestly, I have a stack of, I went into the self-help world. Like I needed, I didn't have the confidence to do be like, okay, not only can I run my own business, but doing this in the world of art, I think not. And I just decided that this is what I want to do. And I was going to study the other people who've done it, whether it's in the art world or something else, believe it or not, um, people might, uh, find this funny, but Thomas Kincaid is one of my, um, I kind of have these ideas of mentors. Now, not because he, of his style of art, um, and not because of, I mean, he wasn't known as the, the greatest guy in the world, but here's somebody who took a product or took his creative process and somehow was able to share it with the rest of the world. So I am fascinated by him as a business standpoint. Right, right, right. Like Madonna. Yeah. It's like, how did you take that and turn it into this amazing thing that people want? So I'm, I'm fascinated by that side of things. But um, I have a stack of self-help books, and I listen to YouTube videos every day. And yes, this is turning into a self-help show. But this, um, one of the most important books for me was a woman who's actually a friend of mine. Um, I knew her when we were both kind of uh, living in LA and uh, I don't want to say poor artist, but yeah, she was a writer and I was a nanny and um, working in a ceramic studio and she was a struggling artist. Her name was is Jen Sincero and she um, is now, I uh, just got on the New York Times bestseller um, with You Are a Badass and it's a self-help book for the Gen Xers. Um, for people who might have a little snark in them and who can't quite digest all the the flowy self-helpery out there. And um, reading her book was just great. It was, I highly suggest it if anyone's even thinking about following their passion and how to do it. She really literally like, kicks your butt into gear um, with her writings and her blogs and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, watching, like I said, watching how other people have run their business. Um, and then finally just gaining the confidence that you only have one life. What are you going to do? What is your passion? And making that decision. So it did take quite a few years for me to come up with the, the guts to say, this is me. This is I'm an artist. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to move forward with it. Um, I have always been jealous of, let's say, a, an accountant. That, to me, is a very clear road. You're going to learn how to do this. You're going to go to this school. You're then going to um, you know, get a job doing this. And so when you say you're an accountant, it's like, oh, okay, great. That, you know, that person's getting a paycheck. And then you say you're an artist. It's a little bit different thing. But what I've decided is that um, becoming an artist or becoming a small business owner or entrepreneur, it is the exact same process. And one of the most key pieces for me is utilizing – um, all the resources Santa Cruz has, which is especially as a small business development center. And this is why I say I'm an entrepreneur because I am I am writing a one business one page business plan. Um, Keith Holtaway, who is a consultant for the Small Business Development Center, has been absolutely instrumental not only in me gaining the the step by step know how on how to move forward with creating your own business. But full disclosure, Keith Holtaway also helped me <laughs> with my. <laughs> And um, and he's helping a lot of other people, and um, he's amazing. And he's, just so you guys know, he is based in out of Next Space. Um, and Keith Holtaway, you can go to the Small Business Development Center, which is based out of um, Carrillo College. College. Um, and Keith also works and meets with people um, downtown at Next Space. So and this can, is a state-run program. Yeah. And so there is money for, for us out there that need help. Um, mm -hmm. In every direction, we're talking, do you need help with hiring somebody? Do you need help with writing a contract? Do you need help with QuickBooks, your accounting? Mm -hmm. Do you need help in particular for Keith? His lens is creating the business plan yeah. and the idea. And he was really great because I had, um, as an artist who's a visual person, um, he has helped me create a quote-unquote business model, um, staying away from this scary word named plan. Because I was like, ah, yeah. plan, I can't have a plan. Plans for execution. <laughs> Startup is for the search. And the model searches it for you. Yeah. He, the, so he's helping me create a model. And one of the things um, going, I've had the, one of the other things that 
um, I have the support and is I'm finding other mentors, um, which has been key. Um, and I know I mentioned Thomas Kincaid, but other people who do I look up to that I want to emulate my business after. And um, and of course, with the world of the World Wide Web, there is so many people out there having success as artists and entrepreneurs. Um, so he's really helped me boil down to really my business is two businesses. One is teaching the workshops and one is the making and selling of art and having an entire business plan, marketing, et cetera. So this, what this does is it gives me the structure and the know-how and the step-by-step process uh, without getting into a huge overwhelm with knowing that, all right, I mean, yes, I'm an artist. I'm creating a product. I'm offering a service. That's really what we're boiling it down to. So when I started putting it into those terms, everything stopped being so scary. And then, of course, watching all of my fellow next spacers who have really been the biggest inspiration. I mean, whether you're thinking about um, going after your passion project or a passion business or um, starting any business, I highly suggest if you're in Santa Cruz to connect uh, with the next space world or any of the, the co-working spaces that exist here. So Cruise.io Cruise is IO. a huge resource. I know that there's a, a co-working space in Felton. Yep, Satellite. And so the, there are these places that mm-hmm. you can get to and will, in a way, take you step by step through creating the business yeah your you, business so your dream these resources are out there um plus depending on your friends <laughs> for emotional support so um many people like my friend ann hazels of radius gallery yeah. has been amazing she's let me show my work at her gallery um of course she's not like just oh throw up anything i mean i you, you're still no. applying no. um she's ann a, hazels way, yeah. is an amazing curator yeah. and doesn't throw up anything. i know <laughs> i know i just sorry to even use the word throw up ann hazels i love you Anne Hazels. Um, but we have so many resources in this town. Um, the So that kind of wraps up a lot of where my inspiration came from. Plus, I just finally got tired of myself not, not willing to take the chance. I only have this one little lifetime and Either you're going to do what you love or you're not. That's right. So My. we don't have time to waste on that one. So I finally decided to move forward. And that's why I do call it like taking the leap from my nine to five or to a creative job. You're listening to Maya Delano. She's telling telling us about taking that leap <laughs> and uh, um, giving creative process workshops as well as creating her own artwork for sale. If you'd like to get more information, please go to Facebook and uh, look up Maya Delano, M-A-Y-A-D-E-L-A-N-O. You can also go to mayadelano.com, but the Facebook page gives you all of the information for events, upcoming events, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the next uh, workshop that she has will be August 30th. That's a Tuesday evening from 6 to 9 p.m. at Next Space, which is at 101 Cooper Street in Santa Cruz. So the Creative Process Workshop, Mm -hmm. can you give us what would that work what does that workshop look like yeah and uh, that's a great question because um what what i've studied and with my my mentor colleen kiber um her i'm going to give you a little background so she was i mean we're um, so when she was in college um she was being taught um art uh pottery um Uh, But at the time, there wasn't necessarily this, uh, no one was teaching you how to always tap in the creative process. So um, you were kind of out on your own and just wishing for the muse to come to you like, oh, please, let me step in the studio today and make something happen. And she was really interested in uh, finding out if there actually was a step-by-step process to always be able to tap back into um, being a creative. I don't know about any of you, but I'm sure you've experienced some sort of creative block, or even if you're needing to write and you cannot write, or you have a blank page in front of you, and you do not know where and how to move forward, um, feeling stuck, in, or in any place in your life feeling stuck. Um, there's actually a very specific five-step process to help you get out of that. <laughs> five and steps only. I know, it's five <laughs> steps. It's so classic, like, in just five steps. Um, but what happened is the creative process has a couple of steps stages in it. And what she did was help identify what those five stages are. So we could then um, identify for yourself what stage you're in and really manage your own creativity in your own creative process so you wouldn't have to just wish the muse would come to you today. And that's really powerful because it means that the power of your creativity is 
is coming from you versus an outside source coming down upon you yeah so the first step is the um making a statement of intention we do this a lot in many different ways whether it's i want to go travel or i want to start my own business or a mission statement Uh, Yes, it's very much exactly like a mission statement. Um, And then that statement of intention can be, I want to become more creative. Like, I I miss having creativity in my life, and I'd like to have more of it in my life. So that might be your statement of intention. That's something that gets a lot of people into my workshops because they are wishing that they could have some form of creativity in their life. Um, And maybe the whole uh, going and looking at a model or drawing a still life is not that appealing because that's really focusing on a product um, and an outcome. This is really more about how do you tap into your creativity. Um, The um, (laughs) so that that is part of it. Um, I have that it's been extremely influential for me. Um, And then the um, so then what we do is we get into the gathering stage. Now, to give you an idea in my workshops, your statement of intention is really what's getting you into that. I want to make more art. Then the gathering stage, um, whether you, you're out traveling and you're gathering ideas and imagery and inspiration, what we do is we actually pull um, images from magazines like National Geographic and start creating a collage. And what that does is I ask you to start picking out images that you like or even ones that you don't like. And what we're doing is we are getting we are tapping right into your your subconscious um your your unconscious self that that layer below you kind of like a lot of us you know get inspiration from our dreams or something like that but this is pulling these images um from magazines really helps you tap into imagery that you're interested in um and that you how do i explain this um Remember, I'm somewhat new (laughs) to making this my entire life's business. So um, pulling out images and putting them out so you can see what you have interest in. What this also is doing is helping you develop um, your personal vocabulary. What is it that you have to say and that you want to talk about in your art? Um, so I might be pulling out images of flowers or lots of you know animals or um, in a recent collage I, that helped me actually with my business plan was a woman who had a graduation ca- cap on. And for me, that image resonated with graduating into a life of art. So then you go into the next step, which is explosion. And explosion is where you are, time flies, you are in the zone, you know, you're making something, or let's say you're writing a book, and you're just like, oh my God, I'm just in it. Um, And time just passes by. And you are, it's it's really like a, a spiritual state for me, just because it's when I'm in the studio for hours and hours, and I realize, oh my God, I just worked on that piece for five hours. And then, um, and then after that, the next stage, and so by the way, um, that's usually when people are doing collages and they're making collage or having them doodle. And I tell them that they only have five minutes and they cannot believe that an hour is already five minutes left and they, an hour, hour is already passed by. Um, so what I'm doing is taking it through the three hour workshop. I'm really condensing and giving you kind of a taste of what this process is. Um, then the next one is assimilation. And what that and that's something that a lot of us don't do anymore, which is to to assimilate is just to really sit there and spend time and look at what you've done and take it all in. So instead of just moving on to the next thing like that, um, you're actually taking time to look at what you just made and ask the piece, like, what what can I learn from you? Um, we also do a lot of writing, and I ask questions, and a lot of I, cre- I give a lot of guidance to help you understand um, understand what this what you've just created from your collage. You're listening to Maya Delano. I am your host, Nada Milkovich. So we've gone through four Mm -hmm. of the stages. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to get to what is the fifth stage (laughs) of the creative process that you would be able to take with Maya Delano's Creative Process Workshops. Her next one is coming up. Uh, She'll be doing monthly workshops uh, August 30th from 6 to 9 p.m. at Next Space in downtown Santa Cruz at 101 Cooper Street. You can go to Maya Delano on Facebook and uh, see all of her um, wonderful creations. There's quite a few beautiful pictures. And we're going to take a quick little break with Cesaria Evora, and we'll be right back. Okay, so Maya, tell us again, what's the last part? 
the last part of the cognition. Yes. Um, the last part of cognition is is really creating an experience um, through or creating it, having the experience of being able to um, be with other people, talk about your artwork. Um, I usually do that in the form of groups going from one person's collage to the next. Um, so you can hear what other people have to say about that. Um, a lot of times in the, the larger spectrum of the world, artists will then put on a show and have, have a gallery show because they want to share what they're doing. They want to see how it influences other people and get feedback from other people. Oh, that sounds wonderful. And this yeah. is a three-hour workshop where you're going through all five of these processes. Yeah, my um, where I've, I've learned to do this um, process has typically been to a weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday, or a four- or five-day workshop. So and you do do longer ones. Yeah, I definitely do longer ones. But for me right now, because I had been working full-time, the, um, the best way for me to be able to – I've created a, a very specific outline to get through. I mean, those three hours are packed. <laughs> You're like, it's it, as if time flies by. Um, one, because we're having a great time, and two, you're tapping into your creativity. Um, but we could easily take that process into hours and days. Um, and I days. just actually got done with a workshop with um, Clean Kiber that was two weeks long. And, I mean, it's incredible uh, the amount of just being able to tap into my creativity and the amount of work that I was able to produce um, okay. during that time. Okay, so let's just take this um, one step at a time. So mm -hmm. you have the three-hour process workshop, yeah. mm -hmm. which will be a monthly workshop. Monthly workshops, yeah, six and, to nine. And then you do the two-day workshop. Mm -hmm. So the first part of it would be, you know, the first day, of course, you would write your your intention, mm -hmm. and then you would get into the gathering stage. And maybe yeah. that would be the longest part, or would you go into the gathering page until the second day, and then the second day yeah. you start? Um, great question. Um, it's always interesting when someone says, well, creative process, what, what does that mean and what are you doing? Um, but to give you kind of a play-by-play, -play, um, what we do is in the very beginning, let's say this is a two-day workshop, we're going to meet and gather and going to give everyone an opportunity to say, you know, why they're there, which is really the statement of intention. And then um, one of the things, instead of me telling you what the process is, I'm actually giving you the experience and then saying, hey, by the way, this is this is this part of the process. So the first thing that we, um, I, we, uh, those who are in this type of work will do is have you go right into doodle. And one of the interesting things is um, even a doodle can be kind of overwhelming and scary for people. You know, a lot of people who take my workshop just haven't tapped into their creativity in a long time. So um, one of the most important things about doodle is that's the first mark we make when we're living little tiny people, whether you are um, marking um, on a piece of paper or, you know, on a on a table when you're not supposed to, but as you're making your mark saying, I am here. And it's actually a really amazing kinesthetic experience for little kids. So they don't really know what they're scribbling. They just know it feels really good to like scribble and make a mark. And so I actually have people tap back into kind of our oldest known way of making mark, which is through line, through doodle. Um, and I literally will say, pick a color that represents love. And people are always like, what do you mean? I just said, kids don't ever, um, <laughs> kids don't question that. They just know exactly. Pick a color that's love. Now make a mark that represents love. And so we start with that. And the next thing I have people do is say, take this piece of paper. We've made all these marks. And by the way, marks and colors do represent. Um, think about advertising agencies and the power of color. They know what colors they're going to use to influence you um, and what designs. I mean, this really one of the things that I've been able to do is take the collage work and the doodling and this and really help define my style and e down to a logo. I mean, I use this process to help inform all the decisions I make around design. Okay, so we're doodling. Yep, so it's we're doodling. the first and day then, of yeah, two days. And that just helps people ease in. And um, I even suggest out there right now for people who do not have any, who want to invite creativity into life is just grab some um, crayons and start doodling in the morning. Um, it's or it's, you know, or it's on a piece of paper right now. Just start doodling. It's a great way to start tapping back into it. And then what we'll do is um, I will have people acknowledge like the colors and the designs and the style that they're using in the doodle. Just like um, when we look at a famous artist and it's a style, we don't have the name on that uh, painting, but we know that it's a Picasso. Um, that doodle's helping you develop your style and develop the colors and acknowledge the colors that you like. Then we go right into collage, and I ask people to tell a story. 
tell the story of your creative life. We're always being asked, well, what's the fam- your history your, of your family? We all know our family's history, but we don't ever talk about our creative life story. So then with that question, I have people pull out collage and imagery. Um, from I usually use high-end magazines, National Geographic, Vogue, that kind of stuff. I try to stay away from things that are have a lot of advertisements. Um, then, then I have them eventually, after about 45 minutes, we actually have them put down those chosen images on a uh, square piece of paper. And it's kind of like a, I will say the word, it's like a vision board. It's what we're going for, for those who are familiar with the vision board. Um, and I will have you lay out images. And it's really interesting. Um, there is just this sense of knowing where to put your images. Um, what I do then pull out is this, um, Colleen Kiber created this or was inspired um, by Jungian psychology and created this map. And it is really a, a map that is based on our human psychology and meaning that this is where we go into creating meaning from your art, from what does this symbol mean? Um, and so I help people understand using a very specific map in terms of how your collage is laid out to help them interpret what the meaning is of these images, um, the symbolic meaning, and then helping you create meaning from your artwork. Oh. You know, there's nothing more than asking an artist, so what does that mean? You know, or tell me about your art, and they can't really talk about it. And they say, I don't know. Like, we all want to know, like, where did this imagery come from? And this collage process really helps people um, be able to talk about their work. And this came from this inspiration. Um, so it's been it's been great helping me being able to write bios when I'm, you know, putting a, a some work together at a gallery. I can really talk about my art. Um, then quickly moving in from collage, um, I will have people um, either take their collage and move it into a, a journal. Um, their writings, their doodle, we'll just kind of fold everything up and create a book out of it. Um, as we all know, if you have a large piece of paper that you're, has a bunch of um, images stuck to it, it's probably going to eventually get thrown under the bed. <laughs> like, what do you do with it? So that way, a journal, you can look at it anytime you want. Um, in my longer classes, we'll then choose an image from the collage, and we're going to move that into clay or some form of sculpture. It's really important to move your visual 2D into 3D, into your life. So um, so I am a, my background is, is ceramics, um, and so that is naturally, of course, where I go. It can be a paper sculpture for those who don't have access to clay. Um, I do want to say one thing. Um, there's a great book called All of a Sudden, The Creative Process that is written by Colleen Kiber. Um, it's wonderful. It also gives you step-by-step process on how to do all of these workshops. It's great for teachers who need some inspiration to help guide their students through the creative process. And whether you have a doodle exercise or the collage exercise or sculpture exercise, it's all in there. And it really goes into depth about the creative process for those who want to know more about it. Oh, thank you, Maya Delano. She is here to talk to us about her creative process workshops, making the leap from nine to fiver to her own business, Maya Delano. She also is an artist, and you can find her information at Maya Delano on Facebook, M A Y A D E L A N O. You can also go to her website, MayaDelano.com. But the Facebook page has a lot of the events and your upcoming workshops, so people can sign in. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, your first workshop went very quickly. Yeah. And how many places are, how many seats are in the... Um, the courses, I I do six people. Um, it, they're, they can be up to eight to ten in the two-day workshops. It's just with three hours. Uh, we have a lot to cover. Yeah. And so six people is really max. Um, and uh, that way everyone can, I can get everybody individual attention as well. And all the information that you would need to sign up for a workshop can be found at the Facebook page and yeah. on the website. Mm-hmm. And the next one, again, is August 30th, 6 to 9 p.m. at Next Space at 101 Cooper Street in mm-hmm. Santa Cruz. Maya Delano, congratulations, and I wish you the best success. Nada, thank you so much for having me. I just love talking with you, I and too. I'm just honored to be here. So thank you so much. Oh, Maya, I love what you're working. So. We're going to be having one more little musical interlude with Bananarchy coming up next. Bananarchy. Maya, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, that's bananas. I love it. <laughs> it's anarchy Can't wait. with the bananas. So stay tuned, everyone. There's just a little bit of Cesario Vora, and then we've got Bananarchy. Bananarchy. <laughs> 